Hey guys, sorry about that hissing, my air compressor leaks a little bit. Anyways, um, so on the GTI here last year, I had a uh, uh, hose, or the hose from my remote reservoir blew out on me, and I'm not exactly sure why, it might have been user error to be honest. Um, I didn't have the, uh, I forgot, and I didn't have the compression or rebound settings. One of those I didn't have equal. Uh, side to side, so that could have caused it. Um, totally my, or you know, potentially my fault. Either way, they were out of warranty, no biggie. So I tried to call Ibach to get them uh, rebuilt, and they said the one time I got a hold of them, they said, "Well, they're uh, uh, discontinued parts, so we don't know if we have the parts to fix that." I could source the parts. I mean, it was just a hose. That's all it needed. That wasn't, you know, something they should have sitting on their shelf. Tried calling a few times and never called me back. So we kind of ended up working on this ourselves. So, you know, and it, it was one of those things I was either going to pay Ibach to do it or I was just going to kind of try to do it myself because I've done dirt bike shocks before. It's not that big of a deal. But anyways, uh, so we got it chucked up here in a vise. And I already rebuilt the one that had been bad. So I just need to change the fluid and recharge this one so they're the same. Um, so start by letting off any pressure on the back of that uh, reservoir and then we're going to pull this valve core it's just the same thing as a uh, tire valve stem um, although this is like some bronzy thing so we're going to put the same one back in um, we're going to take that we're going to screw on our valve core puller tool and we're going to push down um, yep just like that Push down. Uh, the reason I put this on is so that we have something to grab that with and pull it back out later. Um, I guess you could put the uh, uh, valve core in and pff, use air pressure. Probably make a little pop. But anyways, here you have a little circlip. Um, make sure you clean this off. I've already kind of done that. but You don't want any debris falling in your shock like that. You take a little screwdriver and you pop this little circlip out. Live action. All right. And then ideally, if you don't lose your tool, you can pull this thing out. Oh, oh yep, yeah, just like that. Um, so try to set this on a clean thing because we're really not going to change much because we're just doing a little service. So I'm not changing these O-rings. I'm not. I'm not doing anything. All right. So then you have your uh, uh, nitrogen chamber in your shock. Uh, so how these work, just for those who don't really follow suspension stuff, uh, you have a fluid chamber here, a little set of valves on the end of the stick. Um, you control how much, or yeah, how quickly it comes back with this one and then how quickly it goes up with this little valve down here. Um, this sh one should be kind of supplementary to what's on the shock shaft itself. Uh, but anyways, that comes through a hose into this little chamber. Um, so this is kind of one continuous volume of fluid. And then back here you have some nitrogen. The nitrogen keeps it from uh, foaming up and stuff. Uh, it keeps the fluid from foaming and uh, puts a little, like, kind of preload on it. You see they get a little bit stiffer when you put nitrogen on them. But anyways, so now we're going to try to get that out. So my theory is I can just kind of push the shock and work that up. So... It might work. And it's not really working. All right, so I was planning on doing this as, or like keep this all together, but ideas don't always work. So I'll put a little drip tray down, get more shock oil on my hoses, you know, that kind of thing. And we're just gonna pop this fitting off and we can blow air into the kajigger and get this out. Make 
sure not to lose your crush washers. Alrighty. My garage is a mess, as always. This is what real garages look like. Don't let those other YouTubers fool you. They have shops. I have a garage. Okay. So, compressed air. I'm just going to put a little thing over it to catch. Make a huge mess. All right. So we broke the seal, we got that out. All right. Uh. All righty. And we are back upright. So, yep. Yeah. Shot some oil everywhere. It'll be fine. Now we're just gonna let this finish draining and probably help it along. And then I'm gonna hook this hose back up. All right, and we're back. So I got that hooked back up and I put a towel on it so we don't make a mess. And there's these little, so here's the main shock body. Um, so there's these little holes on both sides. We can take a punch and a hammer and we can uh, knock that cap off. Not that punch, small. I have a smaller one up here somewhere. But. Trying not to knock stuff over. Anyways, smaller punch, cap, knock that off. All right, so now that we got that cap popped up, we can take a zip tie and zip tie it around the shaft to keep this thing from being in our way. So we zip tied that up and out of our way. So then we're gonna clean this steel surface area also. Shouldn't be much on it. But now we just need to shove that part down and uh, get to that circlip on the other side. <sighs> Probably not something I can do with one handed. We're, we're gonna shove that down, just two thumbs. Mm. Okay. Okay, so we shove that down with two thumbs, okay. And then we're going to clean up around this circlip again, because like I said, you don't want shit in our shocks. And find the end, and it's kind of, boop. Pop that up and out. Try not to scratch your shaft. Never good when you scratch your shaft. But now we're gonna pull our shaft. So. Again with the shower of oil. All right. So I'm going to clean everything off, including myself, and then we're going to get all that oil drained out of there. All right. So on to reassembly. So uh, we took this whole both reservoir kind of things, and we uh, dumped out all of the uh, existing fluid, Make sure to blow out the hose in the best we could. And now we are going to start putting in fresh oil. So the idea here is that we're gonna fill this hose completely. So elevate this to somewhere so that's not overflowing, but you're still filling this up. And we're just gonna dump oil in. And then once we have this area topped off, we're going to put in that little divider for the nitrogen charge. So hopefully I can catch this. Um, oh, jeez. My little drip tray just tipped over. Dang it. So. Mm. Maybe that's so. Yeah, we'll try that so. Take our shock fluid, and uh, you can actually mess with how the shocks function a little bit 
by using different uh, viscosity shock glue. Um, so I'm all right. Before we were rudely interrupted, I'm using ten weight, um, which is kind of you know upper thick or you know upper middle kind of thing. Um, so we're letting this drain into the main shock body, and we're add some more. Lift up, and you want a good amount in the main shock body having gotten through the hose, so we make sure that we're uh, all good and clear and there's no air bubbles or anything like that. Lift up, let some gravity help. All right, so I think we're pretty good. Um, so now we're going to take this and we're gonna fill it all the way to the top. And make sure this is low enough that we're not losing fluid. So we have all the way filled to the top. And we're gonna take this little divider piece, make sure it's clean, and we're gonna kinda roll it in there. And it can overflow a little bit, and we don't want any air in there if we can help it. Okay, now we're gonna push it down with our thumb. And that should push the fluid into the main shock body. Then we can follow it up with our valve. And that's just a little grease looking funky. Or, yeah, our cap here. Just gonna shove that in and down past the seat. Okay. So now we're going to install our snap ring and try to pull this thing back up level. It's gonna be kind of a pain to do. I might have to cut for this. Oh, well, actually, shouldn't have to cut. Let's see how we're doing. Let's try this. Hey, that's working pretty good. All right. So that's all the way up. And now if I can find my pick. Um, so you need to know how far down that piston is. Um, now I kind of took measurements based on how this one originally was when I redid the other one. Um, so what I found is that we need to have that down pretty much a full pick thing and just push slowly, try not to damage it. And then once we uh, put the uh, put the other stuff back on, that should be about perfect. All right. So hopefully that looked like something and you guys can see what I was doing. All right. So I got the main shock body topped up didn't take as much as i thought it needed but all right so now we're going to take our uh valve and rod assembly uh you want to clean off this teflon seal but make sure it's there and in place and so we're going to kind of just roll this all in try not to damage anything down nice and straight and slowly add it in. Maybe a little twist action. Let me move this out of the seal up. Try to push it down slowly. All right. Now you're going to pump it a couple times to get all the air out. If you did it well, there shouldn't be much, but just make sure your strokes don't come all the way back to the top because then you'll have to start over again and there'll be a lot of air underneath it. All right, and it kind of foamed up a little bit there. So we're gonna let that settle. Yeah. 
there is our enemy here. And anyways, we're gonna pump this till we don't see any air bubbles coming out the top. All right, once you got all the air blood out of the system, you're going to top off until it's kind of crowning and overflowing. And then we're just gonna push this down, trying to get out as much air as we can while we're doing it. Not like that, okay. Top this back off. Whoop. Push down the whole thing, Oop. causing it to overflow. Hopefully, that'll push the air out as the seal goes down in. <clears throat> All right, I need to set you guys down. All right, so I kind of had to redo that. Uh, in the process of pumping out the air, I messed up the uh, depth of this. So I ended up having to like put my lips around that and suck it back out. Um, but anyways, so I got that down, back in, no air underneath it, and then we put the snap ring back in. So now we are going to put some compressed air in the reservoir to seat everything. So. Anyways, yeah. So just kind of put that however much in it. It doesn't matter. It, it can hold a couple hundred PSI. No problem. So it should be okay, no matter what. Um, so anyways, that brought that back up to the top. So we can cut off our zip tie and knock that cap back on and then do the nitrogen charge. All right, guys. So, how to do this the stupid redneck from Kentucky way. Um, so, take out all the air pressure from the system to start with. And then we're going to screw on this emergency tire inflator for our bicycle. Now, this is meant to be used with CO2, but I have nitrogen from Nitro Brewing in the same kind of little uh canister thing so we're gonna uh, do this quick screw that in and we're going to open up and it should happen pretty quickly the thing gets nice and cool you can feel you feel it get cool Tighten it, and then we're just gonna twist off this cap. Um, because this is not meant to be worked at the types of pressures that we are putting in, uh, this thread thing will lock up when you do that. All right, now I have my trusty dusty slime gauge, and we're going to put it on, and then we're gonna back the pressure down. It should have around 150 to 200 PSI on it, um, because my gauge doesn't go up that high, I'm just going to go to the E on the slime. Yeah. All right, and easy peasy, we're done. You can just make sure that shot goes down, comes back up on its own, all good to go. So I will throw these on the car, and uh, we will enjoy them.